Hey, you want to make cool stuff like this, this, or this? You need some NPR shapes. Now, if you want to make stuff like this, this, or this, right. Well, let's get right down to it. First of all, save the default cube and send it straight to hell. Next, we're going to bring in Suzanne. We're going to shade her smooth, and we're going to give her, say, two levels of subdivision. Now, we're going to take our point light. We're going to move it, uh, say, somewhere around here. Lower it a little bit, maybe. Yeah, that should be fine. We'll take our camera. Bring it down so we have a better view of this. And we'll switch our viewport rendered. Now maybe we'll adjust the point light a little bit. There we go. Right. This trick only works with Eevee. Why? Well, because we're going to be using a shader to RGB node. This is not supported by cycles as far as I know. So well, let's bring out our timeline, switch it to the shader editor and make a new material for Suzanne here. We're going to take our base color, bring it all the way up to white. Next, we're going to find us our shader to RGB node. We're going to plug it in. So what does this node actually do well it's right says like it says on the tin takes our bsdf output turns it into pure rgb that we can then manipulate everything you have that's coming from the output of your bsdf your shadows your everything that's going to get changed to rgb and we can play around with that so let's add a color ramp and see what we can see now by default can play around a little bit. Cool. Not very interesting. Just bringing out the shadows, reducing the gradients. Nah, not what we're looking for. Magic is in the interpolation mode. We're going to switch it to constant. Now that is a little bit more like it. Very nice. So the cool thing with the color ramp is you can always change the colors here and you can add more stops to it. So let's take our black and change it to something, something like this. And our white, let's make it this kind of color. Now let's add like two more stops and we're going to eyeball the Transition a little bit between these two colors. There we go. Very nice. We can play around with this a little bit. Maybe shorten the shaded part. Bring out the mid-tones a little bit. Turn down the highlights. There we go. That is your absolute basic cartoony shader with color banding, all that sort of stuff. The only other thing you theoretically need is freestyle. That is in your render properties. We're not going to mess around with it. We can smash F12 immediately and get a result, at least. However, we can make this more interesting. All we need to do is add something some pizzazz, something special to this. And what I like about this kind of style, usually in like drawings and illustrations and all that kind of stuff is stippling. Like the shading isn't done entirely by mixing colors. It's sometimes done with a pencil and you get these cool lines that happen on the shaded areas, like in the darkest of darkest shades. So let's try and replicate that. To do that, we're first going to bring in a wave texture. Now the wave texture 
plug it in to the output nothing special follows kind of the curvature it has these gradients we're gonna have to work on it so let's take this step by step first of all let's fix the curvature problem we want this straight to do that we're going to bring in a texture coordinate node we're going to plug in our window output to the vector input of the wave texture now that is a little bit better we can scale it up to something like oh call it 40 80 for now now that looks a little more like step However, I don't like the way it's angled. I want it to be more sort of a 45 degrees kind of. So I want to rotate it clockwise a little bit. So I'm going to bring in a mapping node, plug it in, and I'm going to rotate it around the Z axis. So that's the axis we're looking for. This looks about right. Next, let's get rid of this gradient here. To do that, we're going to bring back our good friend, the color ramp. Plug it back in. And now, if we take the black stop, modify the thickness of those lines. Take the white stop, remove the gradient. We want to find a sweet spot. That might be a little too harsh, too thick. There we go. They might say, why not switch the interpolation mode to constant? We don't want to do that because if you do, you get these artifacts. Let's switch back to linear. All right, we got our stippling. So how do we mix it with this color that we did previously? Well, the way to do this is, of course, a mix node. Mix RGB. Plug this in. Plug in the color node. And it still looks terrible. Alright. What if we change the blend mode to, say, multiply? Still not what we're looking for. Hmm. What we got to do is we got to use this factor input here to make sure that the stippling only appears in the darkest of areas. So the simplest way to do this is to have another color ramp acting as the factor. Now as an input, we're going to take the shader to RGB node and we're going to switch these stops around. Now, why are we doing this? If I, if we plug this in directly to the output, we can see that what we're doing here is we're putting white on the shadows, on the shaded areas. Now, this is because black represents the value of zero and white represents the value of one. So if we switch these around, that means if we want something to appear on like a, on an area, we need this area to be white if we're using it as a factor. So let's try this again. Let's plug this here. Plug this back in here. Right. Go we'll play around with it a little bit. This is not what we want. Let's switch these inputs around. Boom, it works. There we go. We can take it down a little bit. So, like this, maybe. Very nice. Excellent. Let's increase the scale of the texture a little bit. And now we could play around with this. Oh, we should switch this to constant. That tends to work better. 
Now, we could play around with this, like so. But fine adjustment is going to be difficult. Even if you take this position slider, you adjust it like this. Uh, it's only so much you can do. To give us the sort of effect we want, we can play around with the specular and roughness nodes, or rather inputs, right here. There we go. Ah, I like this a lot better than what we had previously. So let's smash F12 and see how she looks. Very nice. All right, what if you want a more comic book kind of look? What if you want some order dithering? Well, let's give it a shot. So, first things first, we're going to remove our color ramps, our mix node. We're going to leave the, well, let's delete the mapping node too. We're going to leave the texture coordinate and the shader to RGB node intact. So, we're going to bring in, well, another mapping node. We're going to use our window coordinates as the vector, and we're going to bring in a Voronoi texture. Plug that into the vector. Plug this into the output. Scale it up. That's not exactly what we're looking for, so let's change this to a smooth F1 and crank down the randomness. That is slightly better, but as you can see, our pattern here has a problem in that it is stretched in the X. So let's just fix that real quick. Very nice. Scaling it down a little bit. Very good. Okay. So now let's bring in a math node. Shove that in here, shove that in here, boom, what do we get? Slightly better. Okay, let's get some control over this. Let's add a color ramp to our setup. Switch it to constant, as we do. And this looks a little bit better. We are getting somewhere. So a couple of ways, this is a little bit bright for me, a couple of ways we can fix this. One would be to divide the value of everything by two. An easier way to do this without the node is just to take our lamp, crank down the brightness by half. Now that is looking a little better, especially if we add some more notes to here or some mid-tones here maybe so like so and like so there's something else we can do in between the add node and the color ramp to make this slightly less controllable but a lot more effective so what we're going to do we're going to duplicate this these nodes these math nodes over here, we're going to duplicate them twice. Yep. <laughs> now, this first node, we're going to multiply by 10. Then we're going to use the second node and put it into round mode. There it is. And the third node, we're going to divide 10 Okay, 15, still not good enough. Go, let's take a look. Oh, right. <sighs> Divide, that's what we want. Now this has posterized our image a little bit. 
this is a simplified version of posterization math. And what we get here right now is sort of more midtones to control. This gives us a greater range of what we can do with this. And of course, as usual, we can take this, change the colors, make this like a this orange, this a nice yellow, and as usual, smash F12. There we go.